Well, there's one of the places, actually four of these. We'll be routering this edge off flat to that edge. So it's actually a perfect edge. And what we're actually going to do here is we'll put a board there that goes vertically to the next one. Okay, so we've actually glued and screwed all these. Um, but what uh, we'll do now, the glue's gone off, we take out all these screws because we don't actually need them in. First thing we do is get on with the routering. Just a video of the, uh, the router bit. That's the guide edge. As you can see, it's just a finishing bit down to that. And we'll just do that all the way around. Right, front edge of all these four boards. Uh, as you can see, we're actually rounding these off. We just stopped halfway through just to show you. Um, we're doing so we're actually rounding both sides. I'll just wander over to these just to show you. There's one, as you can see, round off on both sides. When it comes to painting this area just here, one colour, and that's going to be another colour. Uh, we wanted some way of having edge to go up to without putting a raised moulding on. And then we'll just paint that in there a different colour again. There are the MDF edges. Rounded these off. I'll show you in another video. You may have seen it earlier. How I actually do it, I actually put the PVA glue on my cloth and then wipe it actually into the timber. Just in the same way as you'd put stain on. All the four upper and lower shelves if you like and these are all the wooden pieces of timber that um, just been cut up to go in there so basically all they do is go in there and they'll be just glued and pinned in position of course they'll have corner bracing that's the reason for the 19 mil overhang over in the first place well we'll move on to doing that first stage fit of the, uh, the external panel wall panels as you can see We've only fastened them on the bottom. We've just stapled them all. We're now going to put in all the corners down here. All the uh, 1x1. One one. As you can see, that's the sides in. We've still got to put the corner piece on there, on that edge. We're now going to put the, uh, the top on. Building the actual crown now, the top part of it. So we're just cutting all these now attaching them in the same way as I did the bottom part of the organ, the base. There's all the uh, corner pegs in, holds the boards nice and steady. These aren't actually attached yet, uh, they're just glued in position at the moment uh, because we have to put a, a quadrant in the back of there, I don't know if you can see that. Right, that's all them, we're now going to fit the uh, upper plate. That's the top and bottom one. Obviously this is the uh, top of the organ cabinet. And we're now just going to do these edges, that's where it's cut in right now to idle where we've stapled it. Quadrant in there and corners in there. Top section complete, apart from painting and decorating of course, looking reasonably pretty. So it's now time to build the sides cheeks that will support that from the lower part of the cabinet for the organ. Now routing out the actual plate here for where the wind chest is going to sit in. So rather than try sawing it on our choice of tool is a router. So now we're just cutting out the piece in the part to insert the wind chest. Next thing is the feet for the bottom of the cabinet. These took me ages to turn, we've got them all the same. Yeah, you know and all, don't you? Uh, these are just stock items from your local DIY. I'm sure you all know what they're for. But these are hardwood. They cost a pound each. I couldn't make them for that. Um, you know, with time and effort, perfect for it. So what we're going to do is we're now going to mount them on there. One thing I do recommend is you sand the bottom. Because some of these aren't flat for some reason. I don't know why, but they're not. Um, but also you need somewhere for the glue to be able to uh, adhere to. Because they're lacquered. So that is very important just to uh, just put on a, a flat block with some sandpaper and just sand the bottom of them just to give a key for the glue. The door handles fitted, <laughs> obviously being used as feet. You can actually turn your own if you want, but I'm sure most people will. I just found it cheaper to go and buy them. Base done, with all its feet on, and just a bit of a strengthening brace to stop the shelf at the bottom of the cupboard from bowing with anything we're sliding in and out. The other little thing that I should point out is to save future problems is where the screw goes in you've actually countersunk so anything we slide in or out we don't catch done that to them all not just 
just the one so they're all perfectly flush so they're not sticking proud is the main thing done that with all seven of the legs lower cabinet ready to take the wind chest with all the pipes already mounted so just goes in in one piece screws through the outer wall two screws one on each side just to secure it in place that's the uh, wind chest with the pipes inserted in the back of the lower of the cabinet place where it's going to permanently sit you, um, you probably noticed a fresh piece of timber on there and that actually is there to provide support for this upper part of the display area of the lower part of the cabinet but obviously you won't see that my assistant will now shove that up so we can see it go up and disappear this is one of the upper supports side cheeks if you like um, I just sign them across the top You've got locating dowels so it can only go in one position and we'll now fit them that's the side uh, cheeks supporting sides for the top install um, I don't know if you can see that but we've got a little locating dowel just there and we've got little locating dowels that half dowel that go in the trench so we know it's bang on line just to show you that on the top that's some on the top on the dowel hole further back there anything with a brass ferrule or brass looking ferrule unscrew that and that's what the cabinets hold together with so if you see a screw that's not got a ferrule don't unscrew it or something you'll be unscrewing something you shouldn't be that's the top on or it's a crown call it what you want um, again we've got all the screws down there we'll just get the back done fitted back all built up with the little corner braces in that I was saying, they're all in look. It's just to get some support so that corners don't come apart in the future when it's being tucked to pieces and one thing or another. It's got one of those in every corner together. So I've got to decorate the bottom half, but uh, as I may be considering selling this one, uh, the next person might not want it the way I do it, so. Or on it, what well, I'll be putting on it. All the essential areas have been done, the bits that you would have to strip down to paint or to varnish or whatever. This is just different colour varnishing. This is beech, that's deep mahogany and that's gold leaf paint. I'm going to make some new stoppers tops first just to make them look prettier. I'm not going to change the stoppers, we're just going to put different tops on. Of course my usual motif, the back of virtually all the organs that I've built, actually lies the joint in the panel, but it also provides the, I don't know if you can actually see that, just there, the brace to the back panel, can't, can't get back far enough to get it all in shot I'm afraid.